And we're back. A little bit more oxygen not included. Now, before we get started on this petroleum butter, I want you to take a quick look down here at this oil biome. Now, did you see that there? You see it? Oop, there it is again. It's coming right for us. And there we go. We're, we're perfectly safe from it now. That was very close. Very close indeed. Now, all joking aside, there was a, the reason I demolished all of this was I want steel. I want lots and lots and lots of steel, and that place was full of fossil. Uh, that fossil I've got 228 tons of now. It also had lots of iron, and as I pointed out in the comments, Imad, Imad pointed it out to me. Uh, you only need 70 kilos of iron to um to make uh, 100 kilos of steel because of the way the game is set up. Now, uh, since I want all of that, we're going to do fossil to lime forever. We should probably do eggshells to lime as well. That should hopefully keep that uh, granulator busy 100% of the time. Then down here we're going to queue this up for iron to iron ore forever. Uh, iron ore to iron, I should say, forever. And this is going to be iron to steel forever. These three will be running constantly until there is no more fossil left or there's no more iron ore. Whichever comes first. At the same time, I... How much refined carbon? I have enough refined carbon there. And now I have all the lime in there as well. So this auto sweeper will fill it up. I want to make as much steel as I possibly can. It's the most useful material in the game. As well as that, I don't have wolframite on this map. There's no coal biomes. If you have a quick look at here, there's not a single coal biome on this map, which means no wolframite. No wolframite means no niobium, no well, no thermium, I should say, until I can get to space and find some way of mining it that way. So for the time being, we're stuck at what with steel. And I want as much as humanly possible, or duplicately possible, whatever the expression is. Anyway, now it's time to get started on this petroleum boiler. First step is to put in a ladder scaffold. We want to make sure we have a nice scaffold in place so that we can build everything and then demolish it as we go. Bricks are okay, but they tend to get in the way, especially when you can accidentally entomb your duplicates. Uh, another little side project I'm doing at the current moment as well is I want to drop more of this salt water down. I want to get up to space and I figure I'll just keep drilling straight up and I can let all that salt water fall down into that nice little pit we've accumulated down the bottom. I've just uh, walled it in this side. The water should fall down here roll over the side and uh, end up in this heat absorption tank that's been slowly eating up all the steam. I uh, I put that wall there just as a sort of a flood break so that my duplicates, it, well, my duplicates can still get across. The water, not so much. Hmm. Considering I'm a little bit sleep deprived and this is going to be a rush build, I think I'm going to protect myself by walling this in now. <laughs> my duplicates don't need to get in here for any reason at all right now and shouldn't need to ever again. So I think I'll just wall that in to prevent, to make sure it stays a vacuum. So long as that's sealed off, I don't care if there's a breach in here. If there's a breach happens in here, I can fix that. But if it gets superheated by magma, then it's much harder to pump 1600 degree gas than it is, you know, 100, 200 degree gas. Uh, I won't, steel won't help you if you end up letting gas in here is what I'm trying to get at. Anyway, I'll just uh, cut forward a bit more until we're ready to get a, a little bit more infrastructure in place. Luckily, I've got some abyssalite in here that's going to help out. That abyssalite will act as a perfect insulator. Uh, there's a little bit of obsidian that comes down here, so I'll just replace that with a couple of insulated obsidian tiles. Uh, considering well, it, thermal transfer is calculated by the lowest thermal conductivity between the two um, tiles, if it's tile to tile. So this obsidian will barely exchange any heat with this, no matter how hot that obsidian gets. So we should be fairly safe on that front. Same with liquids. The insulated tiles don't exchange heat well with liquids at all. Insulated tiles, however, do exchange heat pretty well with gases. Well, okay with gases. There's a 25, I believe a by 25 multiplier. So that I could worry about. But this whole place is a vacuum, so that's not an issue. We should be fine for heat transfer between this and the rest of the build we're about to put in. So, in true Francis fashion, I made this one tile too short. This is eight tiles long, should be nine. I need ten for the dropper. Actually, let me double check my math on that one. And by checking my math, I mean going back and looking at the diagrams. It's been a while since I built one of these from scratch. So, yeah, this has got to be nine tiles long. It just it decreases the amount of magma that will drip into the drip dropper. Drip into the dropper. Yeah, try saying that ten times fast. Uh... So I just got to extend this on and then, hmm, you know what, it might be a better idea to delete that diagonally. Hmm. You know what, I think I can still get in there. Yep, I can totally get in there, which means I can sweep all of that junk out. Get out of there. It's going to cool down my magma. I want that magma nice and hot. Yeah. Oh, and I might want to install that save mod that uh, allows you to disable the saves. You can reset the frequency. 
And we'll seal this up. We don't need uh, this escaping anytime soon. And then we can get back to constructing this. Oh, and over here, I've managed to let all of this water in, though I'm going to be letting in a bunch of sand as well. I think I'm just going to keep going straight up, though that looks like an extremely large pool of water up there. I'm not exactly sure how big that is, but I think our tank can handle it. Probably. Let's see. Yeah, that's, that should probably hold it. Right? Right? Probably? Yeah, yeah. It'll be fine. I'll dump it in and see what happens. This has been a much less cautious playthrough than I'd like, but I'm kind of liking this fly-by-the-seat-of-your-pants approach. It's made things more interesting. Yeah, I'll dig it up just on that side for to start. Uh, I don't want to drop it down both sides. That may take a while for that to empty. Holy jeebus. You know, I'll come back when that kicks in. And in the meantime, i got to do some more work on this sucker to get it ready. You know what? That's already dropped. I want to I wanna actually watch this happen. Dear Lord. <laughs> Oh, that is glorious. Okay, don't overflow. I don't want that going into the oil biome. No, nope. stop, stop, stop. You know what? Quick, delete that. Yeah, some sand for that. Oh, cool. One of the, uh... No, no. <laughs> I did not want that. That's just more mess I have to deal with now. Did someone delete the sand? Wow. I've even got pressure damage on this tile. That's, uh... That's probably the most water I've ever dropped, I, I will admit. Someone repaired that already? Ooh, excellent. Zippy dupes. That's... I think a lot of the steam has just simply vanished due to the sheer mass of that. I also might want to delete a few of those uh, temp shift tiles. I don't think they're doing anything anymore down there. I may want to move them about the place. And this... Uh, that's a lot of water. I, I've, <laughs> I've never played with a subsurface ocean, and that is a lot of water. It's... It's vanished all the steel. I would say evaporated, but it's the reverse. It's condensed all the steam in the air. There's, there's little bits of steam left here and there, but by and large, my whole steam problem is now gone. However, I have encountered a, another slight issue. There's more water up here. I find space, but to get to it, I have to dig through another two pools of water. Dear Lord, there's so much water. I just, I don't have enough space anymore. Checking our uh, liquid tank down here, you'll notice it's, it's pretty full. I think I'm going to have to enlarge this a bit before I go up and move on. Uh, that should take care of that. That will enlarge the water tank a bit. Um, oh, no, I don't want to let that in. That will just cause even more filling. Uh, you know what? We'll, uh, yeah, we'll leave that like that. That should that should keep that contained. Now, uh, one thing I've also noticed in my travels was this is now overheating. It turns out having these three running at the same time in this area it's causing the steam turbine to sort of max out, so this is hitting 272 degrees down here, and every time this spits out some coolant, it's causing a little bit of overheating in this area. It's going above 275. I need to install... There it is, damage overheating. I need to install a third steam turbine. And there we go. Everything's up and running again. Why are they... Wow, they're pretty maxed out. The temperature's not that hot in there. And then it's just back to the same... Wind everything up to the where it was. Lots and lots of steel. That should hopefully stop that overheating problem from happening. And now, now that that is all taken care of, we can go check out... Uh, what was it? Number eight. Yeah, we got plenty of room now. We can drop some more water in there. Should be grand. Grand, I tell you. And there we go. I, I must admit, I find these... I find dropping all this water then... I don't know, hypnotic, therapeutic, cathartic, I'm not sure what the correct word is. All I know is I enjoy watching it happen. Uh, that should provide us with a little bit of an overflow. I should maybe make that a little bit taller. Uh, you know what, This is the this, these are the last ones. Who cares if there's a little bit of an overflow? I'm developing some karmic debt towards the OCD people for all of this. I'll clean this up later, I swear. I'll, I'll get in a liquid pump, I'll get in some filters, I'll filter all of this junk out, and we'll, we'll get it all back to a nice shiny black surface of just pure crude. But uh, for now... Yeah, let's just revel in the glory of that enormous amount of water that got dumped in there. This game does have some fun mechanics that you that I never would have got to re utilize if it hadn't been for the fact that there is so much good water up here. If if you want to run an electrolyzer and you have a, a salt water biome or a, a subsurface ocean, yeah, there's enough water up here to keep you going for several hundred, if not thousands of cycles. This is ridiculous. Uh, only, there's nothing really else though in this biome. There's no there's anything I dislike about this biome. There's no metal in it. There's no iron, gold, copper, nothing, no aluminum. 
the only thing of value in here is salt, and I use the word value there very loosely. Oh, there's some bleachstone as well. So bleachstone and salt, meh. Not really worth it in my opinion. Anyway, I'll uh, just dump down the last of that water and then get on with this. It, it's time to go finish this, uh, this petroleum boiler. The infrastructure build of this is not too exciting. We're just throwing in, uh, well, some insulated tiles all the way along here. This is going to be our counterflow. Our counterflow is only going to be three legs long. We're using aluminum piping. And aluminum piping has such amazing thermal conductivity, you need a much shorter heat exchanger. Well, instead of four legs, you, you can get away with three. I, I tried using one with four legs, and it kept overheating at the top, because just that's just how good aluminum is. It, it can transfer heat so well. Uh, down here, I'm using obsidian insulated tiles for everything, and over here, I'm just going to use igneous rock. This stuff is obsidian because it will be exposed to magma. It's unlikely that it would get in even with temperature shift plates, it would, that it would get that hot as to actually melt, but uh, I have standards. Now, I'll just uh, finish this off, and uh, we'll get on to the next leg of this. You know what, let's just stick in the piping first. This is going to be the, the, the counter flow heat exchanger. It makes it a little bit easier when I know where I'm putting my blocks. So I'll be putting in an entire row of insulated blocks along here, and then another row along the bottom. You know what, I can start putting that in now. Yeah, maybe I shouldn't have deleted some of that scaffolding already. Ah, it looks like it'll work out. Uh, never mind. I'm an idiot. I was about to, uh, well, my duplicates, well, my duplicates can't get that without entombing themselves. So we'll, we'll, we'll just do some minor modifications. I always have a tendency to make silly mistakes while I'm building anything, especially when sleep deprived. Yeah, that'll be, damn, those tubes are getting faster at the building. Oh, nope, they still haven't got that one in the middle. Uh, I'm going to include a few doors here just for maintenance. I will always end up popping a pipe there at some point. It's just, it's going to happen. So I might as well just leave myself some open space so that this duplicates can get in that door. And I'm going to put in a door down here but lock it. That should allow me access if anything goes wrong down there. I can always drain this tank before I go in if needs be. Worst case scenario, I spill out some oil. But uh, once that's all filled in, I can I can lock that door. Oh, I'm still going to have to put in power, aren't I? Mm, power. Oh yeah, big shout out to Boink Games. They sent me on an Imager album that contained the blueprints for this uh, petroleum boiler. They took my petroleum boiler, did up all the blueprints for it, and stuck it into an Imager post. And that saves me so much time. I thought I was going to have to go back and watch my own video and go through all of it to try and figure out how to build this thing again. Um, you forget these things. Well, you forget all the little configuration changes you need to make. Uh, the first thing you do is you make everything out of steel when it comes to this. Uh, automation wires and all that, they're so pathetically small. It's about 25 uh, 25 uh, kilos of steel for an, a logic gate, and it's only about 5 kilos of steel for each piece of automation wire. So you're better off just, you know, paying that and not having to worry about everything horribly exploding in your face. Now, I believe there was a knot gate up here. Oh, make sure that's out of steel as well. If you... Am I the only one who keeps hitting the, the P button instead of the O button? I feel like I do that too many times. Uh, this is going to go... Oh, wait. I made that doorway in the wrong orientation, didn't I? That doorway should be... Yeah. And there we go. Doorway is in the correct orientation. Well, you could technically do it the other way. It's just this is the way I designed it, and this is the way I built it the first time around. And every time I go back and try and redesign stuff I've built before... I find I'm better off just leaving it the way it was. Usually I was pretty thorough first time around. Uh, when I first built this, I, I think I had, there was about two more logic gates included in this. It was just through testing and a little bit of fiddling around, I was able to remove a bunch of logic gates. When it come up, comes to any design, what I try and do at the end is simplify it. Get rid of everything that shouldn't be there. If it's not 100% necessary, it should go. Uh, what's that expression? Mm, I, I, it, a design is not complete. A design is complete not when there's nothing left to add, but when there's nothing left to take away. When you can't take away something without it stopping working, then it's finished. Now, this filter gate should be set to 20 seconds, though I believe that was changed to 25 at a later date. But I'm gonna let it at 20. This should be set to 435, but we've got more leeway with these new aluminum pipes, so I'm gonna set this to 440. Uh, this will make far more sense when we start to spin up this design. This is going to be set to 403, but I don't think that's going to make a difference. These are all in vacuum, aren't they? Ah, oh, damn it. I need to I need to find some way to open that door. I don't want this door engaged when magma drops down. Anyway, I'll do a few more completion bits here, and then, uh, then I'll come back and try and figure out how I'm going to manage that. 
Now we come to a bit of a weird, uh, a weird part of this. These temperature sensors, they're in a vacuum, so they always reg register minus 273. And it doesn't matter what I do with these, I can't actually change the output signal they're giving. So they're always giving it a red. I want to be able to change this. I don't want this door engaged constantly because it will just dump so much heat in here. It'll cause a, an overflow slash burning problem when the time comes. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put a drop of oil in here. And there's two reasons I'm going to need the drop of oil. One is to cool down a mining drill I'm going to put over here. But that's for a little bit later. That's, uh, that will put some oil over here if we break a liquid pipe. So this oil is going to come up here. It's going to stop here. Then I'm going to break open the pipe and drop a blob of oil right where it needs to be. So as you can see, there's one blob of oil right there. We're going to deconstruct that liquid pipe. And when we do, the oil is going to fall down here and it's going to, well, change the temperature on the sensor to give us something we can work with. Once this, the temperature has been triggered, we shouldn't need to come back to it again. Nope, it has been a while. Let's hope they haven't changed anything. And there we go. Now we can see the temperature is at 49. If it's above that, below, uh, it works. We've got the door open. Now I can start deconstructing the stuff around here. This will also give us that drop of liquid over there, which we need, and the rest of that oil, I'm going to let drop down here so we can tweak this thermal sensor. Well, that's the plan. This is my first time trying it this particular method. And there we go. That's dropped down there. That's triggered that sensor. The sensor's giving off red. You know what? Let's see if we can... Just double check we can do this. Yep. Oh. Nope, once it's in... Hmm. Hmm. Oh yeah, I had to have that delay. And I've just dropped a bunch of oil down here, haven't I? Well, that's fine. We've at least got the temperature sensors working, which is exactly what I wanted to do. Now I can mop up all this liquid, and we at least have some control over this system. Uh, remaining steps would be to, well, mop up the mess, seal it up, and hook it up to some power. Oh, and one last thing. This is the ignition sequence. This is what I use to boot this sucker up. Uh, let's put that in there, and then let's uh, cancel then in case it's just overwrite it in steel or something. This allows us to manually control this up here so we can fill the first blob of uh, magma in. Eh, it'll all become clearer as we boot her up. Now, that puts in the last uh, temperature shift plate. Uh, make sure you put in your temperature shift plates. It's very important. Also, these temperature shift plates can work diagonally. So all that's going to happen is magma is going to sit in here, dumps it into window tile, temperature shift plate moves across it into the mechanical airlock that dumps it into the metal gold tiles. Gold tiles, very important. I should do up a... I'll, I'll do up a improved tutorial on this at some point but for the time being i'm just going to finish this off now to put in the final steps of getting this all prepped i've uh, i want to i don't actually need to fire this up just yet well no i don't want to fire this up just yet i really need to get in place a power brick something to burn all the petroleum coming out of, coming out of this you really want to turn these on and just leave these on once you turn them on they're pretty finely tuned to produce to process 10 kilos of crude per second you can down-tune them by replacing some of these pipes here with insulated ones, but by and large, you just want to turn it on and never turn it off again. So what it should really do is have a power brick set up to consume all the crude oil and produce, or the petroleum I'm producing, and have, uh, well, have the oil coming in. Now for the oil, if we go down to the oil biome here, I've put down a liquid pump over here because it's far away from, well, that giant mess I made over there. Apologies again to people who find that really unpleasant to look at. I know I'm one of them. Uh, that liquid pipe is going to come over here, come all the way up, and I haven't even bothered insulating that pipe. I figure it's a hot playthrough, so why bother insulating it? Let's just make it out of normal pipe. That comes up here and is going to feed in. And then I'm just going to have four storage tanks. Just so I can fire this up and show you it in action. Because otherwise I'm just building one and then it'd be the next episode before I finish the the actual petroleum boilers. and Or the petroleum generator brick. Hot petroleum brick? Hot power brick? Power sauna. Power sauna, yes. I'm going to build a power sauna. Once the power sauna is built, we can uh, turn this on for good. But I don't want to be a bit of a tease, build all of this and then not use it. So we'll, we'll finish this up and get it running. Uh, I am just sitting this in here so I can play around a bit with this automation. I'm trying to get this working without dropping that oil out. I want this to... I need that door open so I can get in there and deconstruct that tile. Okay, that is exactly what we want. Now I want to deconstruct this tile up here. Uh, yeah, this needs to go. So once we deconstruct that tile, that uh, magma will flow forward. Then we can recycle this again to close the bottom door and let the magma drop down. And here comes the dupe to finally get us started. Uh, 
So, that's that done. I don't want to open that door just yet until I've cycled this, and I don't want to cycle... Well, I've put in a blob of... I've left a blob of uh, crude oil there so I can keep cycling this and do what I want, but I don't want to drop that down just yet. Uh, this should... close that door and open the top door. Well, let's see. Nope, still hasn't closed it. Why has it not closed that door? One moment. Oh, crud. Um, yeah, I cycled the door. I cycled this to turn this red. That closed that door, and the top door opened. Problem is, that top door is not dropping down any magma. I've seen this happen before. I've built my tank incorrectly. Normally I have it so it's sealed off this side, and the magma just drops down here, and it gives more pressure, which gives more oomph, which means this pours out. Uh, I'm going to need to modify this, aren't I? Yeah, this is going to be painful. I'm going to have to go in here and deconstruct that tile and place a tile about there, so... Hmm. I need to decrease the size of this magma dripper, as in I need to put a block right there. Uh, you know what? I can make that block. Uh, it doesn't have to be insulated. I'm just going to make it out of obsidian. That way my dupes don't have to be in there as long. Uh, deconstruct. There we go. So I've managed to get that tile in there, so what I want to do is deconstruct this. This will shorten the... Hmm. If you've ever played around with magma, if you're going to play around with magma, I recommend you do it on the debug map. Much harder to do in a survival. Um, if you push magma down here, and you, if you make, a, say, a tank of magma, and then open a hole at the side, the magma should form a blade about 11 tiles long. So it should go out as far as that. But normally, well, sometimes I've had issues where it won't go the full level t 11 tiles, it'll only go 10 because there's not enough pressure behind it. But normally I avoid that by having a drop just in front of this uh, volcano, which drops down the magma and it gives it a bit of extra oomph, which makes sure that the blade always happens. I put this rear-facing magma tank and I think it just, I think it stifled it a bit and didn't allow it to get the full oomph behind it. So I'm going to shorten this. Oop, get out of there. Okay, how are you? Didn't even get a scratch, perfect. Now we've got the magma flowing in. Yeah, we topped up. Right, time to save this. Yeah, we're going to save that just in case. Now, I've uh, already put in some crude oil by accident. I forgot to turn that off. So before we fire this up, let's see. I've got power coming in from a couple of coal generators over here. The power is minuscule. It's only required for the the doors and the liquid pumps. Let's see how this sucker pans out. Oh, yeah, I should probably deconstruct some of this stuff in here. You know, uh, let's get rid of all of you. One second while I clean this up. Should also remember to put in the RoboMiner. Very, very, very little important uh, device there. Yeah, and the power for it. That's going to be necessary to cycle out the... Ins uh, the uh, oh, and I'm also going to want to deconstruct these blocks. Uh, I don't need that oil anymore. So once that's done, we can cycle this whole system and get her fired up. Once the magma's in there, we can start dropping in more crude oil. Uh, you know what? I'm going to fill it up with crude oil to, to start. This uh, thermal sensor is not in crude oil. Normally I have an atmosphere. I leave an atmosphere in here, which makes running this one much simpler. But I need to fill this up until the crude oil touches that sensor. So I'll just turn this on, fill it up until the crude oil hits the sensor, and then I'll cut back in. So I got the crude oil up to about there. I maybe overfilled it a tiny bit. I didn't want too much in the top, but meh, it's close enough. I cut it off uh, just in time, I'd say. So now that we've got that in there, we can set that to turn on when the temperature is above 403. You disengage the door. Now you don't want to fill it up too much because when this oil, when this crude oil flashes to petroleum, it's going to flash fast, and all of that crude oil will turn into petroleum. Petroleum takes up more space than crude oil, so it'll cause a pressure surge in this area and it can cause some of the surrounding tiles to crack. It's a pain, but once you've got it fired up, that should never be a problem. It's just if you try and convert large amounts of crude oil out at the same time, that can crack your tiles. So uh, let's give this a shot. Oh wait, save it first. Yeah, that would be an idea. Uh, let's give this sucker a cycle and see how she likes it. Okay, so we've hit that. That turns green. This uh, countdown timer, which is set to 20 seconds, this would give the mining drill normally time to mine out the, the tiles that are in there. And then the door's cycled. Magma dropped. Door's open. Next set comes in. Okay, that's dumping its heat right in there. 
That heat's dumping straight into the crude oil. Oof. Yeah, the door's engaged because this hasn't hit 403 yet. It's sucking the heat out of that magma pretty damn quickly. I still have 100 kilos of... Mm. All right, we'll come back to that. First, we're just going to make sure this all cycles and that it doesn't crack the walls when it does. There we go. We've converted all of that. Yeah, all converted, so it's disengaged the doors. Now we can turn it on. We're just going to dump the oil in there. Now, the crude oil is going up the counterflow. There's nothing to counterflow against just yet, but we should be good to go. Oh, this is a modification on the previous one. I used to have a metal door here beforehand, but no more. I got rid of that and put in this... Uh, I can't remember who it was. Thank you, whoever it was. They showed me this design instead, where you come in across the top and you can just hop down in here. It just simplifies this design because the door used to push that crude oil blob occasionally, and the crude oil blob would sometimes end up dropping down in here and flashing to sour gas. It was a, it caused me some enormous problems. This way, there's do no door, no confusion. It just works. And ooh, I should deconstruct that. I don't need that anymore. That was just to cycle the door manually if needs be. Uh, you know what, actually, that can be... No, I can only use that to open the door. Yeah, that can go. It's fine. As you see, the crude oil is coming in here. Once it hits there, it changes the temperature in here, so it goes above 403. When it does, the door engages, and we start drawing more heat out of this igneous rock. Ah, uh, yes, so we're converting all that crude oil the moment it gets in there. That crude oil is now flowing back down here. Uh, the reason you do this is it's a one-to-one -one conversion ratio. Yeah, I should probably cover the basics. If you don't know how petroleum boiling works, this should take about 60 seconds. If you already know, skip forward 60 seconds. Refinement. If you use a oil refinery to convert crude oil to petroleum, you put in 10 kilos of crude oil, you get out 5 kilos of petroleum and a little bit of natural gas. In other words, you lose half the crude oil. However, if you take that crude oil, we've got a blob of it right there, and you boil it and hit vaporization point, what happens is the crude oil turns directly into petroleum. So you're able to get a one-to-one -one conversion ratio, meaning you can double the potential power you get out of it. Also doubles the potential water. So we pour in this crude oil in here. We set this temperature sensor to 403. The crude oil ends up in here. We drain the heat out of the magma to convert that crude oil into petroleum. That petroleum flows back along here, down a counterflow. What's happening here is the crude oil flowing the opposite direction to the petroleum is soaking up heat from the petroleum going the opposite direction. So as the petroleum gets closer and closer to up here, if you look in the radiant pipe there, the crude oil is at 358 degrees already. We've, this counterflow means the hot petroleum is counterflowing against the colder crude oil. And by the time the crude oil gets to the top, it's so preheated, it only takes a little bit of heat to change it. Now, this is still warming up. By the time it maxes out, it'll be 390 or so degrees, meaning it only takes a tiny bit of heat. And that means you get way more life out of your magma. If you try to just directly convert crude oil at a, say it was 100C, and you try to just dump it into 403, and then, you know, maybe run it through a steam turbine or something to soak the heat out of it. You'd quickly drain all the magma out of a magma tank and you'd have no magma left to convert any petroleum. This way, with the, I've done all the math on this, this will run perfectly on a full-size volcano. Just keeps running forever. The full-size volcano, no matter how bad it is, will produce enough magma to keep it operational. You could, of course, get more magma out of it and use the magma for something else if you wanted to analyze it and do all that. Just a lot of effort. Running one petroleum boiler will give you more power than you could ever need. The other additional bonus is these oil wells. Oil wells, uh, you put in one kilo of water to get out 3.333 kilos of crude oil. Normally, this is a water negative process. However, if you take three of them, well, if you take the crude oil it gives out, boil it, and then burn it in a petroleum generator, the amount of water you get back out is actually 60% more than the water you put into the oil, no, 20% more than the water you put into the oil well. So it's a water positive process, meaning you should never, ever shut off your petroleum generators. You should always be burning the crude oil you're producing. So water positive, energy positive, carbon dioxide positive. It's just great. That's why we build them. Now, back to this. What I want to do here is run this until it's... Oh, I should let that tank fill up a little bit. Let's uh, say if you're above 500 kilos. Uh, yeah, see if I'm above 500. Uh, I'm going to let that fill up so it leaves more petroleum for the crude oil to counterflow with. I'm also mopping up all the crude oil that ended up down here. I don't want the hot igneous rock that's about to fall out of here to cause any issues. Now, why did I need the magma blade up here in the first place? Oh, let me keep an eye on this uh, temperature sensor down here. I want to be ready for when that cycles. The reason we needed that magma blade is if you don't have the magma blade, this thing will overfill quite heavily. You'll end up dropping down an extra, maybe a whole extra tile of uh, magma. I just want to 
So at the moment I'm dropping down an extra 100 kilos. That's because I've had to shorten this magma blade and this is going to now be dumping in more magma than I'd like. Uh, swings and roundabouts, otherwise it wasn't going to work. I've left in enough of a... Mm, enough of a percentage margin for error on this that it should work just fine even if it's dumping in a little bit of extra magma every cycle. I'm okay with that. Now what I'm going to do is fast forward this until this hits 440. Once this hits 440 it's going to start to uh, struggle to start to change the crude oil into petroleum at a fast enough rate. So at that point this drill will activate, mine it out, these doors will open, the igneous rock will drop down and we will continue. You know what I am going to put in these? Uh, yep, so the igneous rock will drop out, then fresh magma will drop down, and the whole process will keep continuing. And again and again and it goes. So, I'll uh, skip forward in time until the temperature sensor is about to hit 440. And here we are. This whole thing is about to cycle. Quick heads up for what you want to look out for. This bottom door is going to open. This mining drill is going to engage. It will remove all of the uh, igneous rock. This door won't open until the, all the mining is done. Uh, it's a 20 second delay. This was timed out. Then once that's done, the bottom door will close, this door will open, and the magma will drop down. So we've got it on as slow as possible, and I'll use a little bit of video editing to hopefully speed this along so you're not waiting too long. There we go, bottom door opens, mining drill engages, it's going to drill at the top two. I know it's hard to see in this overlay, but I want to keep an eye on the automation. You can see this is counting down. So this is mining, mining, mining. There's the second squad, second piece about to go. Save game kicks in, of course, because perfect timing. And come on. There it goes. Both of them drop out. Bottom door closes. Top door opens. Top door closes. Magma drops in. Everything resets. The reason it resets is the temperature sensor down here is detected. It's above 440. So it sends the reset signal. And then this top thing starts to fill up again. How much magma? We didn't even go over any magma there. Oh, that's perfect. Perfect. And that's it. That is a fully functional petroleum boiler. Best thing about this is maintenance free, duplicate interaction free. You just pump in crude oil. So long as you keep pumping in crude oil, it keeps working. Downsides. If you try to run it at less than 10 kilos, if you you can get it down to about usually five, six kilos on these models. Uh, I haven't tested with this particular one because it's using aluminum piping. So if you try to run it at less than six, normally these pipes will start breaking. Your best bet then is to shorten your counter flow. Either uh, move your input up to, say, over here, or replace some of these segments over here with insulated pipes, just to reduce the amount of uh, heat transfer. You can see here, this this the, the crude oil is coming in at 398. It's really close to boiling point, and if it boils inside the pipes, you're in trouble, or converts into petroleum inside the pipes, you're in trouble. So just try and avoid that. Now, big thanks again to Bunk Games for doing up that Immigrant post for me. I'm going to link his Immigrant post in below in the, the, the About section, also the or Details section. Also, the Save Game file will be linked there as well, so if you're going to take the Save Game file have a play around with this, I'm going to have to do up a proper tutorial on one of these. But for the survival, I think this worked out quite well. Uh, as well as that, all that water we dumped down the bottom of the map from up here. Wow, there's a... There's a lot of poke shells around the place as well. All that water we dumped down here has removed all the steam. The steam has finally condensed. It's all gone. <laughs> what's, our, what's our map looking like temperature-wise? Well, okay, this is all cool now. Um, I've decided to enlarge this water tank because why not? There's more water up there I can drop down. And uh, whoa, one last thing. Uh, since I won't be, you know, it's, it's coming up on the weekend, so there's a couple of days. If some of you could think up of some names. The problem is I've got a bunch of dupes I've hired recently, and I haven't got around to naming them yet. So we have four new dupes I've got to name. I've got Mima, Ruby, Devon, and Lyra. And two of them are going to become dogs' bodies, or general all-rounders. Uh, so just like Mumra, uh, uh, Mama U, and Ted Mosby. Ted Ted became a dog's body because, you know, they were they're pretty useless. Useless. So a couple of dogs' bodies. Uh, come up with what names you can. Whichever one gets the most upvotes, uh, I'll switch them in. And a couple of tinkerers. You know, like uh, Tinker Tot, uh, Kaylee, you know, Optimus Dupe. You know, come up with a couple of tinker names. Come up with a couple of uh, dogs' body names. Hopefully we get some decent ones in there because uh, I've run all out of imagination. Anyway, hope you enjoyed this uh, petroleum boiler and I hope it's at least partially useful at helping you with your getting through your games. And uh, good luck.